everybody to the forum on the Second Amendment here tonight. Uh, I'd like to uh, just say a few words of welcoming with our remarks. Uh, this event is sponsored by the Jackson County Republican Party, but we open this thing up to the public. Uh, we respect uh, any Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Tea Party, or Night 12, etc. is here. We do appreciate your attendance. And we want to hear your voice. Uh, before we get off start tonight, I'd like everybody to stand for the pledge of allegiance. Richard Stone. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And now I'm going to introduce you to my dad, Richard G. Stone. He's going to recite the Second Amendment. Take it away, Daddy. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm a little bit nervous. I really think I need to I should be in next year to the security of the police state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms and not be infringed. Thank you. What we'll do next is we'll uh, introduce our speakers and then we'll have the speakers come up one at a time. Each speaker will be allowed 10 minutes to speak, uh, give a brief uh, explanation of who they are, what they do, and what they know. Currently going on in the State House, uh, uh, U.S. Senate, uh, Congress, or uh, anywhere here in Iowa. Uh, we we'll want to hear from them, get their opinions, their comments, and what, what do they know. Um, after uh, the questions, we'll have questions from the audience. Uh, each questioner will have to be allowed one minute to ask the question. And the responder would have two minutes. Uh, we will try to uh, lightly enforce these rules. Uh, Richard over here will be the watchdog. Uh, green means you're okay. Red means that uh, we make sure you're going to curtail it and be respectful for anybody else who wants to ask a question. Uh, so the uh, speakers that we have here tonight, uh, we sent an invitation to uh, U.S. Congressman Bruce Braley. He did not respond to our request. Uh, so I suggest that the audience here may want to do your own homework on Bruce Braley. Uh, I'd like to see he is an NRA AF rated. Our next speaker will be Brian Moore. Uh, he's our state representative for District 58. Uh, for my homework, uh, he is NRA A rated. Uh, third speaker we're going to have here is uh, Todd Bowman, uh, state senator, District 29. Todd's not going to be able to be here tonight. Uh, however, he did uh, give me a statement that I will read for him. Uh, I did some homework on Todd. Uh, he did not fill out his uh, qu questionnaire from the NRA in 2010. And we have also A.J. Spiker. He is the chairman of the Republican Party of Iowa. And we have Rod Bloom. He's presumptive uh, FY 2014 U.S. Congressional candidate, president of Digital Canal Corporation, and former Iowa Entrepreneur of the Year, and an R NRA member. We also have tonight Craig Swartz from the Iowa State Rifle and Pistol Association. So those are our speakers. So, Brian, if you'd like to come up. Thank you, Bill. Uh, I want to thank uh, Bill and the rest of the Jackson County Central Committee for putting on this uh, event. And uh, be quite honest, Rich, I get nervous too in front of people yet, so I haven't quite gotten used to that. But uh, uh, I guess give you a little bit of my background. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in Makoka, Jackson County. Uh, lived in Zwingle for 23 years. We just moved to Bellevue to make it much easier for my wife to teach at Bellevue Marquette and handle the kids while I'm out in Des Moines trying to make uh, good laws for you guys. And uh, so uh, we have eight children, one grandchild, and one on the way now. I should say we have two daughter-in-law, they don't like to be excluded. Uh, my district changes here, it is all of Jackson County, about two-thirds of Jones County, plus the city of Cascade and Dubuque County. So uh, the territory's changed a little bit uh, from what it was two years ago. Um, I guess I was just gonna bring, we did, we've run some uh, uh, gun right legislation the last uh, three years, we ran one a week ago. Uh, but the first year I was out there, we ran Senate File 456, 
which changes the reporting process for persons prohibited from possessing a firearm, also changes the process for removal from the National Instant Criminal Background Check System database. That passed the House, it passed the Senate, and the Governor signed that law. Uh, HF 2215 allows a person to defend themselves or others in any place they are legally present. It removes the requirement that a person must be retreat before using reasonable force. I think it was commonly called stand your ground. Uh, we, uh, we passed that uh, in the House uh, in 2012 and it didn't make it through the Senate that year. So uh, it, it stood there for the session and uh, they did not vote on it. House Joint Resolution 2009 is the uh, amendment to Iowa's Constitution including the right to bear arms. We had some uh, Matt Winchell, which is the champion in the House for bringing up uh, the gun legislation there. And uh, he had an amendment which uh, added to that right along with Lance Horbach uh, to strengthen it and it passed the House but did not again go through the Senate. And then uh, last week we just did one and it is uh, the confidentiality so that uh, uh, we passed it in the House. It's going over to the Senate and hopefully they'll, they'll consider it and look at it. And uh, it just uh, keeps the, comp the confidential so that it's not uh, given to the public who has a permit to carry. So we're trying to keep it, uh, keep that right with you. So mainly uh, tonight what I'm gonna do, I'm done talking here already, but uh, I'm gonna uh, listen tonight, take notes. If there's anything I can take back to the house, the members there, and uh, pass along to those members. And uh, uh, again, I'll be ready to take questions and thanks for coming. Thank you, Brian. Okay, I'll take the opportunity to speak for Todd Bowman. Uh, he gave me a uh, written statement that I will uh, speak for him. Uh, it's a statement from State Senator Todd Bowman of Makokoda. Thank you for the invitation to this public forum and rally for the Second Amendment and the Constitution. I appreciate the opportunity to make this statement affirming my support of the Second Amendment rights of Iowans. Our founding fathers understood the importance of the citizenry's ability to protect itself and to that end adopted the Second Amendment, declaring the right of people to keep and bear arms. I am a steadfast supporter of the Second Amendment. In 2010, the legislature took a giant step in the right direction of the Patches of Senate File 2379, which is known as the Shell Issue Bill. This bill allows numerous Iowans to carry permits. Many of these folks have been previously denied permits to carry. During the 2013 session, our focus is on improving our mental health system, not imposing new restrictions on law-abiding citizens. Like many of you, I am very concerned about our mental health system and making sure that Iowa citizens who suffer from mental illness get the treatment and support they need. I believe that providing good mental health care for all Iowans who need it would go a long way to make Iowa's community safer. The legislature is currently involved in a significant effort to improve Iowa's mental health care system and the way services for the mentally ill are delivered. Just to be clear, I do not support placing more burdens on the citizens who exercise their Second Amendment rights. Thanks again for the opportunity to make this statement. Senator Todd Holman. Uh, next speaker would be A.J. Spike. Thank you. And thank you all for coming tonight. It's, it's amazing to see people come out on a Friday night and take time off from their family to, to spend time talking about an issue that's important to not only this community, not only the Iowans, but the whole country. As we look at some of the things that are going on around the nation, it, it really makes us all pause and, and reflect on what we are doing as a people, the, the laws that we are putting in place as a people, and, and how our government's working. And over the years, the Second Amendment has been attempted to be chiseled down. And unfortunately, people haven't stood up and spoke up enough, and that's why it's great that you're all here tonight, because people like you standing up is what it's going to take to reinstitute the Second Amendment to what it was designed to be, and that is a limitation on the government, not the people. This yeah. 
The Second Amendment clearly is designed to make sure you have the ability to arm yourselves so that in the event the country ever had a tyrannical government, you would be able to protect yourself, your community, your family, and, and push off that kind of a government. So I think it's, a, it's important that we all speak up on this issue and let it be known uh, that, that not only the Republican <coughs> Party, but that people across the nation are willing to stand on this issue. Uh, stand your ground legislation is becoming very popular in a lot of states, and, and I think we're gonna continue to see more of that. Recently, there was a talk in Des Moines of a, uh, you know, they, they collect your, your information from these waiting lists, and currently they can publish that information, and, and there's talk of, um, you know, let's make this list confidential. But I've got another idea. How about we not gather that to begin with? Yeah. And, and if you guys push back and you make these requests of your government, you're going to get it. And I, I know in the Iowa House, the Iowa Senate, the Federal Congress, the U.S. Senate, they want to be reelected. And they listen to the people. And if you push on them, they will move. And if they're not listening to you, go back and push again and push again and push again. And if you have to, go run against them. You know, we have a primary system for a reason. And if you're not getting results from the person who is in office, there's nothing wrong with standing up and saying, if you're not going to get it done, by golly, I'm going to get it done. Or I'm going to help my neighbor get it done. And we're going to have real Second Amendment legislation. So I would encourage all of you to get involved, stay involved, push back. This is a very important issue. It unites you know, people from across the political spectrum. I'm sure there's Democrats in this room. Uh, there's people like my dad who just frankly don't like either political party because they've let you down. And, and there's Republicans in this room. And I'm thrilled that you're all here tonight. I look forward to having a, a great conversation with you. Uh, I'm from Ames, Iowa, and I uh, have three children and a wife, and things like this are what it's all about. People coming out in the community, making a difference, and look forward to the dialogue here this evening. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker would be Rod Loon. I agree with what AJ said. It's 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 a really great feeling why I pulled in here to see all the cars in the parking lot. And looking through around the room here, I have a feeling there's a lot of Democrats here, a lot of independent voters here, and a lot of Republican voters here. And that's really a neat thing in this country that the Constitution of the United States can bring this group together on a Friday night. I think that's awesome. I couldn't agree more, AJ. I'm glad to be back in uh, Jackson County. I lost this county by six votes in the primary last year, six votes. So hopefully I can find six votes, to seven votes tonight and change that, uh, change the next go around. I have a prepared speech here. Usually I don't do that. I usually speak impromptu, but this is a highly charged emotional issue and the media is here and I wanna make sure that I'm not misquoted or taken out of context, not that Aaron or Kurt would do that, but uh, I, just wanna, I just wanna be careful. Let me begin by saying I'm the father of four children and the surrogate father of another child named Malcolm. Malcolm is an African-American boy that uh, I met when I coached basketball at Dubuque Senior High School. And we took Malcolm into our hearts and into our home when he became an orphan. He moved to Dubuque with his mother from the south side of Chicago to escape the violence in the south side of Chicago. And Malcolm and I would stay up late at night and have a lot of talks. And I'll never forget the talk he told me when he was in fourth grade walking to school he and his friend were unfortunately on the scene of a drive-by shooting his friend a fourth grader got shot Malcolm told me he'll never forget he ran to the front porch of a house and cowered in the corner of that front porch until the police arrived and also sadly Malcolm's biological father was murdered in Chicago in a drug deal gone bad I also have a 13 year old daughter Sophie who attends Roosevelt Middle School in Dubuque. And I can't imagine 
losing Sophie to violence, to a senseless act of violence as a gun shooting. So the tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary School strikes home close to home for me, as I'm sure does all of you. Because protecting our children from violence isn't a conservative position, and it isn't a liberal position, it's a common sense position. With that being said, let me state clearly what this gun control debate is not about. And it's not about stopping the killing sprees of over-medicated, deranged individuals. We need to remember, my friends, the Sandy Hook shooting, the Virginia Tech shooting, the Aurora, Colorado Batman shooting, the Tucson shooting, all those killers were mentally unstable young men who were prescribed mind-altering drugs by psychiatrists. This debate is also not about keeping guns from criminals, nor is it even about public safety. What this debate is about is attacking our personal liberties that are guaranteed to us by the Constitution of the United States. That's what this debate is about. And through Democrat and Republican administrations both, slowly but surely our civil liberties have eroded. And with Barack Obama in the White House, it's a full frontal all out attack on our civil liberties and the Bill of Rights. I just wanna make a point here. The Second Amendment of the Constitution does not guarantee our right to bear arms. Does not guarantee the right to buy bear arms. That right and the right to defend ourselves and our families is an inalienable right. It's a right that comes from natural law, that comes from our creator, and it precedes government, and it shall not be infringed. Since the right to protect ourselves and our families does not come from government, it is not a government right they can take away. Restricting the type of guns that us law-abiding citizens possess, it only empowers criminals who don't really care about the laws, do they? And it makes us, law-abiding citizens, much more likely to become their victims. So often when a tragedy occurs in this country, citizens ask government to, quote, do something about it. We need to do something about it. And in, that, and in the rush to make citizens believe that government is all powerful and government is capable of anything, legislators pass laws that do what? They typically take away our civil freedoms and liberties. And the truth of the matter, the truth of the matter is that government cannot prevent bad things from happening. The truth of the matter is that laws that they pass in response to tragedies seldom solve the problem and seldom protect us. And the truth of the matter is gun control laws seldom prevent violence. By way of example, a government agency, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, it's a government, a federal government agency, studied the assault weapon ban and other gun control attempts. And they found, here's what they found, I'll read it word for word, insufficient evidence to determine the effectiveness of any of the firearm laws reviewed for preventing violence. Insufficient evidence. As I said earlier, my su surrogate son Malcolm's father was murdered in Chicago. Malcolm was uh, involved in a drive-by shooting. So I thought, I want to compare Chicago to Iowa out of curiosity. Because the population of the city of Chicago is roughly equal to the population of the state of Iowa. And by most all estimates, Iowa has two to three times the number of guns as the city of Chicago does. Two to three times the number of guns because they have some strict gun control laws. Therefore, if it were true that guns create violence, then shouldn't Iowa, shouldn't there be a lot more murders in Iowa than in Chicago? But guess what? Wrong, way wrong. Chicago averages over 400 murders a year by guns. 400 murders a year for the last 10 years. Iowa, 2011, we had 23 murders with guns. If we look at the big picture, if we look at the United States of America, 80% of counties in this country have zero murders with guns. Okay, however, 3% of counties in this country, 
account for 70% of the murders with guns. Just 3%. Where would you guess that gun ownership is the heaviest? In the 80% where there are zero murders. That's where the gun ownership is the heaviest. And interestingly enough, the murder rate in this country has dropped by 50% over the last 20 to 30 years. But mass killings have increased. Isn't that interesting? A couple reasons I can think why is we heavily medicate these individuals. Okay, and secondly, the media. They're, put all, they're, they're made famous, so they're gonna go out in a blaze of glory. Those are a couple things we need to look at. So who does kill people? What does kill people? By and large, people who accept violence as a way of life. People who live in poor urban neighborhoods typically kill other people. And disproportionately, young men of color kill other young men of color. The current focus is on the objects, the guns. And it's not based on fact, it's based on emotion. And sadly, it diverts attention and resources from taking care of the real problem. There are many ways to reduce violence. We can decrease poverty by increasing good paying jobs. In other words, let's get the economy rolling. A good job will decrease violence. Let's encourage two-parent households. Let's increase personal responsibility. That's taken a leave of absence for this country, has it not? Let's increase educational achievement. Higher the education, the lower these criminal rates go down. Let's have school choice, school voucher system, particularly in the urban areas of major cities. And could we not protect our school children if we really wanted to protect them? Could we station a police officer in every school? It's interesting, when I go to a high school football game at Dubuque Senior, there's two police officers there, and they're armed. But, so my daughter Sophie, she's safe if she goes to a football game, but for eight hours a day she's in the school, there's no one there with a gun. We could station police officers in every school if we wanted to get serious about protecting our kids. So in closing, as Ann Rand said, she wrote the famous book, Atlas Shrug, let's act, instead of doing things that make us feel good, let's actually do good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Craig Schwartz from the Iowa State Rifle and Pistol Association. I always enjoy coming back over this neighborhood. I grew up in uh, the area west of Davenport, between there and Bluegrass. I had uh, relatives that farmed up here, Del Mar area. Wife used to teach at Briggs Elementary School here for seven years, and I taught in Calamus, Iowa for eight years. This was back when I had color in my hair. What I do now is I represent the Iowa State Rifle Pistol Association, the uh, Iowa Sportsman's Federation, which is a lobbying group, capital, and I also de facto represent the NRA. I work gun shows. <laughs> I work about 20 gun shows in the Iowa, Des Moines and Cedar Rapids uh, a year. And I sit at the door and sometimes it's 20 below zero in the doorway and we sit there and we bark at you as you come in try to get you to join the National Rifle Association. And um, over the past, uh, I'll say five years, it's been interesting to watch what's happened to the lines at the gun shows. We'll have a line five blocks long in Des Moines, people waiting to get into the show, standing in the cold, sometimes it's wet, and they're waiting to buy 22 bullets at 750 per hundred. They're waiting to buy a $600 AR-15 for about $1,500 if they can get one or a Glock. $450 Glock pistol for maybe retail price of around 700 bucks. Components for reloading, I reload about 34 calibers. The components have gone sky high. You all know this. I'm probably not telling anybody anything they don't know. Uh, if you want ammunition, excuse me, you're going to pay for it. Anything that you do that has to do with the Second Amendment right now is in a panic at the gun show. Now, I remember, and I think some of you in here are old enough to remember, that this same thing happened under the Clinton administration. Exactly the same thing. In fact, I'm still reloading with primers that I bought during the Clinton administration. So, some of you know what I'm talking about. But I'm smart enough not to have to buy them this time. 
as I sit there at the door of the gun show and I ask people, and, and here's the deal, and if you come over to Cedar Rapids tomorrow, I'm set up over there. I've got a brother and I that have been doing this forever. If you come over there, we'll bark at you on the way in and you can join the NRA back here tonight for 25 bucks. I hope it's okay to advertise this, but you can join for 25 instead of 35, use your credit card, cash check. Uh, I don't take kids or girlfriends, but anyway, if you bring that receipt over with you to Cedar Rapids tomorrow, you get into the show free, which is $7 to get into the show. So you can see this is a pretty good deal. I also give you a cap that's 15 bucks on the website. So let's, let's try to add all that up. I'm giving you a $10 discount. This is what I do to everybody at all these gun shows. $10 discount. So instead of $35, it's $25. You get into the show free, and I'll give you that seven more bucks. Give you a $15 cap that if you've ever joined online or somebody calls you in the middle of the night on the phone and tries to get you to drink, you know damn well you never get that cap. And you ought to hear the people. That people are in my face at these shows because they didn't get this chap, the cap that came from China but they're in my face. So anyway, you're getting all this stuff and still I have trouble with people. The biggest problem we have with the Second Amendment right now, you can blame it on the legislators, you can blame it on the president, you can blame it on George Soros. I Figure out your, your devil. The biggest problem with people are sitting here that are not members of the NRA. There's something like 90 million gun owners in this country. There's something like 330 million people, if I did the math right. That's somewhere between a third and a fourth of those people are gun owners. And, and we can't expect the little kids to be gun owners, and maybe when you're really old, you probably turn them over to your kids. There's that many people that own guns. There's, we're just cracking four and a half million again in the NRA. The last time they did that was when Clinton was in office. And it was a great thing in 94. If you were back then and you remember voting and you remember watching the returns, it was a blast to watch those people who voted to take away your gun rights. It was a blast to watch them go bye-bye. And they went away. But the problem is they've been coming back. And they come back worse and worse. So. The only thing that will help most people, certainly everybody in here understands everything about the Second Amendment and the Constitution, so I'm preaching to the choir here, but it's very difficult to be informed if you sit at home and watch the nightly news. You know this, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But if you join the NRA, you at least get a magazine every month that's about three months behind in its publication, but you also can sign up for email alerts you can sign up for all sorts of things that will keep you informed. Information is what you need. You have to know when it's time to make a phone call. You have to know when it's time to email legislators. If you don't have some organization that's doing this and helping you out, you're going to be in the dark. Now, as I sit at, these, at the gun show doors, I'm always amazed at the kind of people that don't join NRA. There's always, there's always Usually one leader, there's three or four guys come through and you say, how about joining? Nah, I already got one of them. I already got one of them. No, he doesn't. He doesn't know what it is. But he's the leader. Then there's the people that say, I don't agree. With, you know, I joined, but I don't agree with it. Well, I don't agree with some of the stuff that my wife says. In fact, <laughs> as you get older, it's getting past the 50% thing, you know. But I don't. <laughs> Well, she doesn't agree with me in the name, so I understand. <laughs> but the church, I don't agree with everything they do. I mean, who do you agree with totally? Nobody. But you've got to agree that the Second Amendment is a right that was given to us by our Creator. And, you, I mean, you have to agree to that. Who else is going to help you with that? Those people that absolutely say, the funniest one I've ever heard is, I don't want to do this. I'm not going to join because I don't want anybody to know I got guns. Okay, tell that to Randy Weaver. Tell that to anybody. Or these guys, I, they won't take my gun. They'll never get my guns. They'll roll a tank right over your house. They'll have a drum looking in your bedroom window. Are you crazy? 
I, I can go on and on. It looks like I shouldn't. And uh, uh, what I would say, I think it was Benjamin Franklin said, when they were adopting the Constitution, we must all hang together, or we will certainly hang separately. And I would rather be surrounded by fellow NRA members than anyone I can think of. So that's my appeal to you tonight. That's the solution. Become informed. Become involved. You'd love to hear from an NRA member. I know you would. And you get back in, you'd be listening to us. You'd be leaving us. So thank you so much for the opportunity to speak here. I'd love to see you all at Cedar Rapids at the show tomorrow. It's a, it'll be a line and the prices are too damn high, but uh, show up. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open the forum up to questions. Anybody in this audience can ask any question of our speakers. Again, I wanna reiterate the, the rules. You're gonna need one minute to uh, ask your question and two minutes for a response. And I, again, I ask that you respect that the other people who wanna ask questions. We're gonna have Jason here, we're gonna have two mics. So we're going to pass the mic around whoever would like to ask a question, and then who you would like to direct it to the speaker, and I'll hand the mic to that particular speaker. So any question on the Second Amendment, uh, please uh, feel free to stand up. Jason, I'll hand you the mic. of an old agreement, law, or the like. So all these politicians who break this law are guilty of treason, basically. And to the man with, with the NRA, the NRA has been around for how long? I and think the fight just keeps getting tougher. What's, what's up with that? I mean, it don't sound to me like the NRA is doing anything except gather most of the people. Uh, we had the biggest violation of our rights about a year and a half ago and Brian I talked to you about that there's 57,000 acres of ground here that was covered with uh, gypsy moth spray and the sheriff in this county would do nothing you can't violate our rights and do nothing and be the sheriff of Jackson County the people in this county ought to be in period uh, one note uh, to the audience I did invite uh, Jackson County Sheriff Getman I had hoped he'd be here, but I don't see him in, in, in attendance. The other thing is the definition of the militia. The militia is every man, able-bodied man from 20 to 50. Would you like a response to the NRA question? Okay. Um, as far as gathering names and things in 1993 there was a law that was going to be passed didn't matter what it was it's like if you want to stand on a railroad track stand right there that's fine with me this law is coming and it's going to be passed whether you like it or not this guy named larry pratt gun owners of america he was going to go right in the congress offices and bring a bang on there by god you are not going to pass this semi-auto ban we're going to do this and that and it's it's and nra took this took the position that it is going to pass. There's nothing we can do about it. I don't know. Maybe you had a suggestion that would work better. But there was nothing that was going to happen. So we had it sunset in 10 years. So after 10 years, you go out and you buy the same thing that you were buying before. Let's take Iowa as an example. You would not have gotten them back had you not negotiated. A what? Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, that, that again, you're going to have to talk to the people in the legislature and see if you can get a class three through. Because if you go to Nebraska, you can't. If you go to Wisconsin, you can't. That's a state law. That's not a federal law, so that's that's a state law. In Arizona. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of states that have class three. Yeah, I know. So. No, they don't. Yeah, class three. Yeah. Can't have a gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Did we fully answer your question? Yes? 
Next questioner. Okay, if the sheriff's not here, does anybody know where he stands? Uh, well, I asked when I actually went to the sheriff's office uh, last week in person, talked to Sheriff Ketman, and uh, informed him what was going on here tonight. Immediately after that, I went over to the Makokota Police Department in person and let them know as well. Um, in my opinion, the sheriff is the people's friend. Uh, in times like this, if, if the government wants to force us down on our throats, the sheriff has to stand with the people. In my opinion, and the sheriff is our friend. I hope that the rest of you think that as well. I hope, he, I hope he'd be here so he can hear that, but he's not. I need to speak to that. This is in regards to the sheriff being our friend. Uh, I live uh, rural a lot, and I've had a neighbor who has done some very grievous things. Uh, but mostly harassing and things like that. And on one occasion, he crossed over on my property uh, without permission, and after he'd been told not to. In, in a discussion that we had, he threatened to uh, do me great bodily harm. Uh, the language is not fit for ladies. And so, when he was approaching my car, I was sitting in my car on my lane, uh, 150 yards into my property. He approached my car, and I had a handgun laying on the seat. As soon as I reached over and grabbed it, he took off, and I stepped out of the car, and probably out of frustration, and whatever. I fired it in a ditch, and I was told that that's what got me in trouble. It cost me a thousand dollars to get myself out of there. It was 150 yards of my property, um, and I had been verbally assaulted. No, Ross is not my friend. Thank you. Your opinion. Pressure. This question too, but to anybody that can answer it is the speakers. Uh, since Todd Bowman is not here tonight to give us his uh, voting record on the Second Amendment and the gun issues and stand your ground law, or do any of you fellas know how he voted on that the last year or two? Does anybody know his record? I, I don't know his record. I just know out of uh, the three bills so far, they've only uh, passed the first bill he sent over. And I don't know how he voted on that. I could also say that if he didn't turn in his, uh, if he didn't turn in the, the form that we send out, that, uh, the questionnaire, um, he, he should have he should have turned that in. But um, I've heard nothing either either way from. Him, so. Well, in that case, I would sure recommend everyone in this uh, building contact Todd uh, concerning this here because I, I don't know where he stands honestly. It's based on the statement that he sent. Uh, for many of you, too, at the house, we sit there, we go to meetings all day long, but we constantly carry a notepad or a computer or even on our phones, and we look through our... And I've I, I got to admit, I'm, I'm poor at responding very fast or very well, but I do look through everything, and I do look at every email, and we, we categorize them as they come in. So uh, it does... Hey, if you have an issue or you're trying to support or not support something, send it there because that does influence probably how some bills come up if we get enough of it coming through. So you do on both sides of the chambers too. You want to do it the House representatives. Uh, you can blitz it and send it to all of them or the, sen uh, the senators. You can blitz it or just getting it to your own uh, representative or senator uh, that gets forwarded or passed on too. So. Uh, do take the time if you have issues that you really feel disgusted, important, whatever to you. Uh, and from, if people get up now and they ask questions, please give the name. I can't see very good anymore, so <laughs> that would help us. Question? Any other questions? I want to know from 
Senator Bowman why he didn't fill out a Senate um, you know, survey. Um, I'm not a single issue voter, but that is something that's very important to me. Uh, I want to know how somebody stands on gun rights because my husband and I farm, we have two small children, and uh, I want to make sure that I have the right, especially to stand, you know, stand your ground law, that if somebody comes onto my property, I have that right to pull out my gun and defend my property and, and my family. So that's a question that I am going to send uh, off to uh, Senator Bowman. I hope I get an answer. I don't know when I get one from him. gasoline when everybody wants it <laughs> or you know chocolate what happens to roses around Valentine's Day for God's sake um, if, if what I said before was true if, if people are all running in you can generally buy a glo now I'm not seeing a gouge and let me explain if um, my brother and I were looking at Glock pistols and I don't need one but we were looking and they're all the same price now. You never see that at a gun show. So they're all at retail top price right now. Doesn't matter if you go to Michael Payne or Mark C or any of these guys, they're all the same price. And the AR 15s are all supposed to be somewhere around $15.95. Now we all know we didn't pay that. And the ammunition is, is whatever you want. The one thing I saw tonight, which would be gouging, I think, were small rifle primers at $75 a thousand. But you know what? If there's some idiot that's going to pay that for them, and there there must be, there must be. So my yeah, advice to you is, is hold off. Just say the same with food, same with gasoline. Hold off. Yeah, I just wanted to speak on that. My name is AJ Spiker again, and you know the Department of Homeland Security purchased one point or uh, submitted a. Uh, purchase order in March for 1.6 uh, million rounds. Billion, 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 excuse me. billion with a B. We're not onto the trillion yet. Um, rounds of ammo. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty. Uh, you know, I, I didn't just get out of bed. They're helping drive up these prices because they know people are suffering in this economy. Gas prices are high. Food prices are high. They drive up ammo and gun prices. And it prices people out of the market. So I think we need to all be talking to our federal federal congressmen, senators, and tell them that, that we need to put some restrictions on the Department of Homeland Security and some of these other federal entities uh, that have no problem adding to the national debt and, and driving people like us out of the marketplace. Well, let me see if I got this right. Department of Homeland Security buys 1.6 million rounds of ammo. Billion. 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 With B. And if we take all the rounds that were expended in Iraq war, does everybody know how long it takes to fire or go through those 1.6 million rounds? 24 years. What are they going to do with all that? My question. Makes me nervous. Makes me nervous as well. 24 years. What about the armed uh, first military? <laughs> Uh, it was more of a statement than anything else. There's 2,800 personnel, armored personnel carriers that uh, are in the loop there too. But I, one of you made a comment about there being a common sense approach to the whole issue. But why are we not seeing that common sense approach from our state house? We're seeing a, 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 a very divided Democrat Republican. Are the Democrats so out of the loop that they have no common sense? And I don't care who wants to respond to that. <laughs> I'll give you my perspective on that a little bit. Since I've been there, 
and it's only been three years. I'm just in my second term. What I see out there is you have about 80, 85 percent of people who work together, no matter what party they are. Part of the problem is you get leadership on both sides that have been there for maybe too long. Is what I see. But they set the pace of everything, and they've been struggling against each other, and it's all based on who gets the majority. And that's what happens. And in this group, you want a conservative base in there to promote, that tends to be the platform for what you guys are trying to promote. So it's getting more and more important that we get out there, be active, to put the type of people you want in there. And, you know, I don't think, I don't want to be in there 16 years. I've been running trying to get a term limit bill the last three years through. And it didn't even make it out of subcommittee. This year, the first year, at least I got it to go to committee. And this year, and even some guys I thought that what came in with me they would understand this let's get and after you're there i don't know what it is it must be like drugs you, you get all into the situation you know i mean you get wrapped up and it, it just it's not that we're getting paid a lot we're getting paid adequately i think but we're not getting paid a lot but they just they lose senses that, and what i also see out there is you get some extreme people in certain districts that they're able to get in i think there's some districts they could run a monkey with an r or a d behind their name they get in and that's that's <laughs> That's where I think, uh, you know, even if you are in a Democrat or Republican district, we should be primarying these, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, and try and get some common sense people in there. That's that's my perspective, I guess, from being out there so far. So just to enlighten you a little bit. Now listen, I was the one that said, why don't we use common sense? And uh, there's not a lot of common sense in Washington, D.C. My, my business partner, when I told him I was running for Congress 18 months ago, said, that's great, Rod. You've been in business 18 years together. He said, I'll support you to the end of the world. He said, but you're never going to win. I said, why not? He said, well, first of all, you're honest. He said, and secondly, you use common sense. He said, so that, does, that doesn't fly with politics. We look at Washington, D.C. Now, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, because I'll blast the Republicans just as much as I'll blast the Democrats on certain issues. But Barack Obama is a highly partisan president. He, I'm 58 years old. He is the most divisive partisan president I have ever seen in the White House in my 58 years. So that doesn't help the situation. Secondly, we have Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, and, and this, this left-wing San Francisco agenda. And it's pretty clear, they, well, they don't say it, but you can tell by their actions. They want to take away all your guns. Every single one of them, eventually. So is Rahm Emanuel, who was the chief of staff for Barack Obama, and now he's the mayor of Chicago. His quote was what? Never let a crisis go to waste. So every time there's a mass killing, it's despicable, but they politicize it. And they use it to forward their left-wing agenda of taking away our guns. And as I said before, the government doesn't have the right to do that. It's a God-given natural law you have to defend your family and yourself from intruders onto your property. The government has nothing to do with that. But, but, that's, but that's their agenda. And uh, you know, every time something bad happens, they're going to keep waving this flag to take away some more of our personal liberties and our rights to defend ourselves. So I, it's going to be... It's going to be tough slogging all the time. But, but seeing this many people here tonight absolutely warms my heart. And, and seeing the membership of the NRA continue to grow and to see people continuing to arm themselves. My God, I'm starting to look for stock in companies that, that make guns. Because Barack Obama is the best thing that ever happened to that industry, huh? But this warms my heart. It really does to see this guy kind of turn out and this kind of caring on a Friday night. This is awesome. And because of this, their agenda will not get through. I just heard that uh, I talked to a parent who has service, uh, son in service, and her husband was a career in the service. And they are teaching our young soldiers to disarm citizens. Now, what would be the reason for that? This is part of their training. Uh, we have a question that wants to answer that. Okay, I'm a Vietnam vet. I just retired from government service the munitions command and back in the The big push for our servicemen is to disarm the 
people like in Afghanistan. Do you want us to shoot them all? No. It's better if we disarm them and everybody's happy. Well, it would be if there was a riot and they're, they're after your house. Wouldn't you want the soldiers to come in and disarm them and send to them like the Chinese and Tiananmen Square, put the tank up there, machine gun up 300 of them? You see, it's all law enforcement. How many police would have talked to disarmed citizens? Every one of them. Okay? You've got to remember, look at the big picture. They also require all government employees and all, all ser servicemen to be on the lookout for the symptoms and indications of trafficking in uh, <coughs> uh, slaves. They put a big pressure on it. You have to know. And the quickest, the best defense, okay, is a good offense. So if you stick a pistol in my face, why should I shoot you if I can take it away from you? See, that's why they teach these things. Remember this, you've got the media. They want to blow this thing up and cause people to get excited. Have you seen the pictures of downtown Detroit where everything's all burnt? Well, I got news for you, I just came back from there. You won't find a burnt house down there. It's all green space. In the last two years, they didn't have one fire during hell night and Halloween. But ask the media, they'll tell you Detroit's the worst place there is in the world. They'll take their crime rate against Chicago. Right. Mayor Parsons. Yeah. Mayor Parsons. Brian Welsh is coming. Training here. I'd like to ask if all the guys on the panel whether they actually believe that a young man deranged on SSRA drugs can do the damage that was done in Sandy Hook, in the theaters, in uh, Arizona. Do you actually believe? that a deranged young man can go in there and operate that type of weaponry that skillfully when he's on those drugs and he's whacked out. Yes, I do. Because when you look at how many rounds are expended and what the actual count of, of hits was, it isn't all that great. I wouldn't call any of these people marksmen. So, and it, you know, me, if I was going to do something like that, you saw it off shotgun and be running through. I'm not you know, trying to give anybody here any implications of what you should do. But we're, we're talk, what, what would happen if somebody just right here stood up and just went nuts? How many people? <laughs> Maybe, and there is the answer to your question. These people were all taken out in, in these gun-free zones where you can't come in with a firearm. I, I wanted to make a response. I taught school 40 years. That's why I got gray hair, white hair. I taught in the inner city of Des Moines the last 28. I, I do not believe having armed cops in the school is the answer. And I'll tell you why. The armed cop is there every day. And he knows the kids. And the kids know him. These kids that pull this crap. And it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, it's a matter of it is going to happen, when is it going to happen, what can we do about it. It would be so simple for me just to walk up to the cop. How are you doing this morning? Now I've got two guns. I've got his gun, I've got my gun. And, and there's no way you can train somebody for something like that. There's absolutely no way. I think the only reasonable response is to follow Israel's example and teachers there, there was no reason I couldn't have gone every day of my life with a little J frame tucked in here and if somebody would have seen it on me they should have fired me or thrown me out the women teachers would have to have the gun on them, couldn't be in their purse but, and this is not the NRA's line, this is my line as a guy that taught for you that's the only answer. I, I, I can't imagine having someone come into my classroom and me try to get my kids and shield them and I have 
no recourse but to look this jerk in the eye while he blows my head off and then he goes and kills the rest of the kids that that absolutely has to be stopped and i think the only reason the only way to do that is what i put forth now that's not going to fly politically it isn't well that'll be up that'll be up to the good people here and others like you to speak to people like this and try to push some of these laws I would say crazy people do crazy things and you, you can't, uh, if you have a government that is capable of reacting to this kind of a situation, it means you're not free anymore and you're in a cage. So as far as uh, arms teachers and things like this, you know, having gun-free zones is like a, a big lit up sign that says, come here, you know, nobody's going to stop you. Uh, no different than you go to a mall, you'll see malls, gun-free zone. Yeah. they're really doing a disservice to the people that shop there to the kids that go to school I you know personally I'm not in favor of a TSA style school or a TSA style mall uh, but I certainly think that uh, teachers who want to arm themselves ought to be able to arm themselves I don't think your uh, Second Amendment right um, I mean obviously you have private property rights school districts need to be involved in these kind of decisions not necessarily even the state and federal government because these are things that you as parents uh, in your community need to decide and if you don't like what one district does you can you know open a roll to another district uh, but but the more local government on this uh, the better but we also have to remember to respect property rights at the same time I, I think they've already uh, nailed it I agree crazy people can, uh, can do crazy things we can't stop them all the time but I was just sitting here thinking, in the, in just in the last five minutes, I think we have heard more common sense ideas to your, to your question about how to protect our school children. And that's what this debate's supposed to be about, about gun control. We've heard more common sense things here in the last five minutes than we've heard in the last six months in the United States Congress. All right. wanted to say basically with the school system the way things are going I've stopped up at my son's school plenty of times and sorry it's like squealing down here um, but anyways when you go to the school and they have that little buzzer on the outside and I buzz the button and nobody's looking at me <coughs> opens up I just walk in I mean talk about common sense let's let's start worrying about okay who's at the door what does he look like what does he have does he look like he's got a big trench coat with a gun or you know there's a lot of common sense things I think we can do in our schools but also we need to get a lot of things passed along with you know the whole system like you know you mentioned about it you should be able to go to the school with a gun if you're a teacher or you're a staff member or maybe even the janitor the bottom line is we need to stop Towards like, there's just a lot of things I think that can be done with common sense. And like I said, I agree with the NRA guy up here up front that teachers and everyone should be able to be armed. And just the fact, just take the signs down. I mean, take the signs down that says "gun free zone." Let's start there. I mean, it's a simple procedure. Thank you. I was just uh, wondering we were talking about Todd going and forth. And in the last two months, I wish I brought the emails with me, but I have sent him three different emails about two different subjects on gun control. And he never asked me back on any of them. But the one I wrote to him twice was about uh, voter uh, ID registering all guns. And that's something um, he's never responded to me on, which everybody knows here that anybody registering guns is not going to accomplish anything as far as uh, violence. So uh, I'm another one I try to contact Todd and uh, I never had any response on uh, gun issues. Hey, hey Brian, is there any uh, legislation or anything coming up in the House or Senate on background checks or anything right now that you know? There is uh, uh, 
Matt Winchell has brought that. He says that's a potential uh, thing that's come up. I don't know where it's going. At. It doesn't have a lot of traction right now, but there's some talk going on there. For a little bit. I'm not on the judiciary, you know, public safety committee, so I got my own world of the, the other committees at this point, you know, and things are moving fast with funnel. But uh, uh, I, I just heard some rumblings about it. Questioners? How was he ever able to carry four pistols, two rifles, and supposedly done, fire 200 rounds, and supposedly disable the he was in that short period of time? There is no possible way he could have done that and disabled like that. There's no way that good of a shot be able to do that and to be able to reload that many times that clip only holds 30 rounds at the max and this would clip 10 so how is he supposed to be able to do that how how many guns do i have on me how many guns do i have on me You couldn't conceal under a coat more than one firearm? Are, are we trying to say that, are we talking Adam Lanza right now? Is that who we're talking uh, Sandy Hook? So are we trying to say that he didn't do this? No. Well. Okay, well, then you need to get any information you have out there to Sandy Hook, Connecticut. I, again, you have to go out there with your information. Okay. Thank you. Right this is for Brian. Uh, knowing you're in the politics out there, where's the choke point? What people, by name, is choking us from getting this cleared up here in Iowa. There has to be people out there, like you say, some of the long-term individuals out there. Who are they, you know, by name, so we have a proper direction to go. We know some of the people who are supporting us, but how about you give us the names who do not support us that we have influence on? I guess I can give you the leader of uh, who decides what is run or isn't run over in the Senate. Because uh, we showed where the laws that have come up, we passed them in the House with the leadership we have at this time. Groundstall, the Council Bluffs, Mike Groundstall. He is the uh, leader, the Senate leader of the Democrat Party. And uh, by being the leader, he gets to decide what bills will be or will not be run. Is that simple, I guess. And he's been there 20, 30 years. Questions? How about if I throw out some talking points and maybe it sparks more questions? Uh, you know, it appears that uh, the Senate is not going to be able to uh, do an assault weapons ban. So I think what they're going to do, in my opinion, is tax and regulate. Make it so expensive that we cannot buy ammo, we cannot buy guns. Uh, they already addressed the ammo availability problem. So how about uh, ammo taxes, ammo limits, firearms taxes? One gun a month. Uh, assault weapons ban, we already talked about that. Magazine capacity limits. Universal background checks. Gun registration. Gun show loophole. How many guns are gun show lately? Who's the first person you see when you walk in the gun show or the last person you see when you walk in the gun show? The sheriff. Come on, give me a break. We talked a little bit about the mental health, uh, also along with uh, the Obamacare, the doctors that asking you if you own a gun in Obamacare. Uh, we, uh, we addressed Army schools. Uh, we have not addressed the concealed weapons permits. So there's some talking points. So if anybody cares to ask any questions about those, uh, please uh, feel free. I'd like to hear it. Anyone else? 
more questions? Be free. We're all here in this forum to speak freely. I don't, I'm there again. I taught school in Makoka for 35 years. And we teach our kids all along. Our kids were taught to get under their desks for protection. That's just setting them up. You know, and we've taught that all along. Obama's children, there are 11 guards in that school besides the Secret Service. Why can't we have something like that in our schools? You want to pay for it? I don't know. I guess I want to pay for it. Federally funded, of course. <laughs> you know, funding is always an issue with education, and uh, it'd probably take more than 2% allowable growth to handle that one. So. <laughs> they fight having federal funding. Two-part question. Two-part question. One, when we had the uh, the assault weapons ban that grandfathered out, did that ever go to a Supreme Court challenge in the Second Amendment? No. And the list they, of the Supreme Court wouldn't take it up. Okay. And the list of uh, the list of uh, gun legislation or, or ways around gun bans that was just mentioned, would any of those, or could any of those be beat in the uh, Supreme Court? I'm not sure which one could. Yeah, let me uh, just get a list of how to control our weapons without taking guns away. Proposing those are right. things. They are things. No, no, but there are things that might happen. Those are just talking points. I'm right. trying. I'm trying to list right. questions from the, from the audience here. I just wonder how many of those things would all those things stand a, a Supreme Court chair? Right. They'd have to take it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Ye
Oh, <laughs> dude, <laughs> 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 you made that point. Not everything's funny. Mm -hmm. Which I love to see. And I, I travel over now to come up here and 